Welcome to the Flagler Humane Society's YouTube channel. I'm here with Dr. Carlos, and we're going to explain some things about the Flagler Humane Society today, some services we offer, and some things we offer for the community. And we're also going to be recording a radio show, so we're going to be putting on our headphones and recording the radio show just so you guys know. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Speaking of Animals. My name is Caitlin Holling and I'm the Community Outreach and Development Coordinator at the Flag the Humane Society. Happy Saturday to all our listeners. Today I am joined by a very special guest. He is our medical director and the shelter veterinarian at the Flag the Humane Society. Please welcome Dr. Carlos Aguirre. Thank you. Thank okay. you for having me. Thank very you. excited. Yay. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you a few questions. What motivated you to become a veterinarian? I was exposed from early on because my father was a vet. Mm -hmm. So I always really liked the surgical instruments. Okay. And I loved the surgical aspect of it. Oh, wow. It just always fascinated me that you could do a procedure and then the animal just gets better. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different types of surgery. For example, there's a orthopedic surgery or brain surgery or spinal surgery mm -hmm. but what I do mostly is abdominal surgeries okay so we, we specialize at the Flagler Humane Society at high volume spay neuter oh wow okay so for about 10 years I've been doing two surgeries okay. <laughs> over and over oh the two surgeries yeah, spay I, and neuters, I, yeah. I just came from the shelter and we just did 24 oh so. wow I had to uh, speed it up because I had to come to this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> we appreciate your time. So I wanted to ask you a few things you do at the Humane Society. You just mentioned you do a lot of spay and neuter surgeries. Is there anything else that you do at the Humane Society? Yeah, the Humane Society is a very important institution for Palm Coast. And I just want everybody to know how important it is. Mm -hmm. And if you've traveled to South America or the Caribbean, you'll probably notice there's a lot of stray animals. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? I have. So our job is basically overpopulation control. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have a vaccine clinic. So just those two, those two services are very important for the community's health. Definitely. Because, for example... There is a problem right now in Australia. There is so many feral cats. The country declared war on oh feral, feral cats. Wow. It's just, they don't know what to do with this feral cat population. They're asking people to kill them? They're, <laughs> yes. They're, they're shooting them and oh, any means awesome. necessary because it has become an invasive, invasive species. Yeah, kind of like deer, I guess, here. Yeah, and in the, in the Ocala area, the pigs have become an invasive oh, wow. species. So... That's very, impor very important, a uh, population control. Yeah. And what inspired you to start working at the Flagler Humane Society? I really liked the aspect of, you know, helping the community mm -hmm. and uh, co controlling the, the, the feral cat population. Yeah. And not only that, I just, the, the day just goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. I get there, I start working, and you just go into a state of flow. And by the time you know it, the, the day's gone. Yeah. And That's perfect. I actually prepared something that you're going to find very interesting because I did. Okay. A, in the around 1800s, animals, for example, horses, were like the cars. And they were also the, the ways to transport mm -hmm. a supplies and stuff so one of the first founders of an ASPA was a man called Henry Berg he was a diplomat to Russia oh. and he was appalled at how cruel people were to animals some animals were beaten to death because okay. they just couldn't haul you know the amount of weight so he came back in 1866 he started the ASPCA and his mission was to stop a anti in the let me see in 1866 he created the Berg law, which was the first anti-cruelty law in the United States, and he founded the ASPCA. And look, this is what a poet said about him. He was a friend to every friendless beast. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy was the, the founder of the first ASPCA. And then after the work that he did, other states adopted anti-cruelty laws. That's awesome. And so now we have all these humane societies, you know, that protect animals. And uh, I'll give you an example. In New York City, 
1866, they had to kill 300 dogs a day. Oh. They were either shoot or drown them. Oh, my goodness. So we're not at that state anymore. And it's because of these humane societies. We've made a lot of progress. Yes. Yeah. And look, these are the goals of the ASPCA is decrease overpopulation. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing with spay and neutering. Stop animal abuse. Educate the public, which is like what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. And we also legislate. Yes. Like once a year, mostly in the spring, with the help of the ASPCA, we go to Tallahassee to, you know, help animals. Yes, recently we just stopped the chaining uh, in Flagler County. We don't. We just stopped allowing animals, or specifically dogs, to be chained outside in Flagler County for multiple days. So we don't think that's acceptable. So we finally got that passed, and now it is legal in Flagler County to leave a dog chained outside. So we have made progress, even in Flagler County, which is awesome. And this is something else. Maybe you're listening to this and you say, what do I care? I don't even like animals and I hate cats. And I was like, <laughs> this is why you should care because we control the overpopulation of animals. You're not going to have stray animals all over, all over your neighborhood. Yeah. And there's always one in every neighborhood that has 30, 40 cats. Mm -hmm. And then since they're not controlling these cats, these kids spread out into our neighborhood. Yeah. So, you know, we should inform these people that which they mean... You know, they mean the best. They just want to help animals. But once you get into 40, 50 animals, they, these animals become a burden to them. It's and they just much. can't care for them. Yeah. The other thing we're doing, we're, we have a animal control that goes out into the community. And they've been able to find uh, animals that are dog fighting. And uh, why you should care about this? Well, dog fighting is associated with drugs mm -hmm. and crime. Yeah. So by us going out and finding these folks, and I'm telling you, uh, next week, I'm actually, we have to go to court to, to, to deal with these people. Mm -hmm. And the lawyer started asking me so many questions that I thought I was in trouble. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, they're really <laughs> taking this like really serious. Yeah, it is serious. It's very cruel. It is. Yeah. And then two more things. So... We do the spaying and the vaccination. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know this, but we got to talk about this. Yeah, it's definitely. They did a, a study recently. 30% of people think that vaccinating your pet causes autism. Oh, my goodness. 30%? Wow. <laughs> that's, that's Autism. Awesome. Have you ever seen a dog go to school like on a slow <laughs> bus or anything like that? I was like, no. this is a problem that started because people... Or against the COVID, and then they're associating vaccines in general. Yeah. So and it, and uh, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Horror movie. Um, I like the Woman in Black. Oh, I haven't seen that. One. Yeah, has Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> but <laughs> I gotta check that out. Yeah. But they asked me this the other day. What was your favorite? And it's like mine was Cujo. Have you ever seen Cujo? I don't think I've seen Cujo? <laughs> you know, I haven't. Well, since you know Halloween is coming up, you should see Cujo. Yeah, I have to watch it. And uh, every great story needs a villain, yeah. right? In Cujo, the villain was rabies. Oh, so it was a dog. dog that got bitten by a by a rabid a bat. Okay. And then he went from this nice dog to a rabid, vicious animal, and it was sort of like Jaws, okay. but with dogs. Oh wow! Okay. You know, so. I, I really stress that you people think about this. Vaccines do not cause autism. No. They do not. In in dogs, at least. I'm not a human doctor. But if we do not vaccinate these animals, we're going to have rabies outbreaks and another series of, of, of problems. That's a big problem. Very serious. Rabies. Make sure your animals have rabies vaccines, at least. Rabies, rabies. is the law. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I've law. never seen a rabbit animal. And you know why? Because we vaccinate. Mm -hmm. That's very important. And you know what we I've never seen also? I've never seen smallpox. I've never seen polio because people vaccinate. So it's very important, you know, especially uh, get your dogs uh, vaccinated. We have a vaccine clinic every Saturday, low, uh, low cost. We have modern medicine, so we need to take advantage of it and use it. All right, we're going to take one quick break, and we'll be right back with Dr. Carlos. Alrighty, and we're back with Dr. Carlos. Today on Speaking of Animals, Dr. Carlos and I wanted to showcase everything we do at the Flagler Humane Society and all the services we offer. 
So one of the biggest ways we at the Flagler Humane Society help our community is by helping control the population of feral and stray animals in our community, which we already touched on a bit. But I wanted to explain why this is so vital for our community. Hey, well, the Flagler Humane Society was founded in 1980. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the services that they provide to the community. First mm -hmm. of all, we have an animal control and their job is a first they catch stray animals, dogs and cats. There's also animal cruelty cases where animals are seized. Or man, maybe there's, like we spoke before, there's people that have too many animals. Oh, and yeah. we've had multiple times 50, 60 animals show up at one time. So yeah. all these animals are processed. They're vaccinated, dewormed, given medical care. So that's the second thing we do. We shelter them, mm -hmm. see? So... Uh, that takes a lot of effort, not only from our staff, but we have volunteers that do a great job. Yeah. These animals need to f be fed, housed, walk, and it's a 365 a year job. Yes. It's very labor intensive, it's very challenging. Mm -hmm. The other thing we have is a veterinary clinic where we do spay and neuter for the public. And on Saturdays, we see about 75 vaccines. So we vaccinate low income and this, with the high cost of veterinary medicine, because a lot of clinics, they've gone corporate and they're just jacking up prices. This is a way for people that are low income, don't have as many resources. You could get at least your dog vaccinated. At the, and then like we talked before, there's legislature changing the laws. And uh, what do you think? These, these are a lot of services that just we help a lot of, of folks that, that are in need. Yes, know? a lot of other services we offer. We have even more. We have so okay, many good. services. We have a furry friend food bank, which we offer um, people in financial distress or financial situations where they can't afford food or they might be considering surrendering their pet to the shelter. We try to offer them finan food financial assistance, so we will give them food once a month to, to feed the pet for the entire month. And... We do that based on income, so we don't want you to have to surrender your pet, and we can help you out doing that. Another way we try to help people not have to surrender their pets is by doing free spay or neuters if they're low income and if they qualify, just so we can help get their animals spayed or neutered and not be reproducing and creating more animals and further creating an issue of overpopulation in our community. We also offer microchips weekly. We do Microchip Monday. It's on Mondays from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. And you can come in and get a completely free microchip. The implant's free. You can register it for free. Everything is free. It's through the company Phi Nano. They also do um, the GPS callers. You might have heard of them. Um, but they gave us free microchips for our community, which is awesome. So if your pet ever gets lost, it, they are um, able to be scanned nationally across the entire world. They can be scanned. So wherever you are, it's iOS certified and it's compatible with all the scanners. So you can relax and know that your furry friend will be returned to you if they do happen to get lost. And then also on Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., we have Toenail Tuesdays where you can bring your pet in to get their nails trimmed. It's only $15 per pet. and it's either cat or dogs, or you can get your bird, reptile, or guinea pig, or pocket pet. We also do nail trims for them, and it's only $10 for small pets. And we specialize in challenging animals. If your animal is a little challenging, we have doggy lifts, and we just charge $5 extra if they have to do a doggy lift. But we have experts that are really good at um, trimming those nails if they're a little challenging. All right, and I wanted to ask Dr. Carlos, why is it so important to keep your pets vaccinated and on heart and flea prevention? We talked a little about a bit. We talked a little bit about rabies, but I want to talk about all the vaccinations and specifically heartworm and flea prevention. The problem I'm seeing in the shelter is a lot of dogs when they get heartworm, they get dumped, oh. and we're seeing at least five, six animals with heartworm a week. And uh, last year we were intaking about 50 animals a week. So this is a problem. Oh, yeah. So it's cheaper to prevent heartworm than treat it. Definitely. So these pills cost about maybe $10, $12 a month. And the dog will not get heartworm, intestinal parasites. Some even have fleas and ticks. And uh, the vaccines include uh, the rabies that we just uh, talked about. 
and the rabies is uh is transmitted mostly by bats and we've had some raccoons and some cats but mostly is bats that transmit it and if your animal does get bitten by a rabbit animal it takes about maybe a, a week to 10 days for the virus to travel to the brain and the mortality is 100 percent the dog is gonna die and it's gonna be infectious to humans so if that does happen and your dog is not vaccinated your dog may have to be sacrificed and then what we have to do is decapitate them take off the head and send it yes. to, to get examined okay. so it's it's something that i think the vaccine costs 12 13 dollars that's yeah. it so you're gonna have to go and put your animal through this and the stress of your family because you might have an animal that might affect the health of your family your children mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah, that's one of the reasons to vaccinate animals and also deworm them. And I also talk about there's five basic things to keep animals healthy. So number one will be dental care. We do that on Fridays also. A microchipping, and it's free. Mm -hmm. Can you have a better price than that? Free? Yeah, no. <laughs> just take your dog and get microchipped. It's free. You just gotta come in and get it. <laughs> the other thing is uh, internal and external parasite control. So it'll be like your heart guard plus or something similar, parental worms inside the heart, intestines, mm -hmm. and then uh, flea and ticks, that's number three. The other thing is spay and neuter, so control overpopulation, and the fifth is vaccination. Yes. So these series of five things is going to prevent a lot of bigger problems. You know, because what we're seeing also, when the animal is seven, eight years old, we're seeing a lot of pyometrias. You know, those people that just didn't want to spay their animals because they wanted to have puppies and that series of things that people have these romantic ideas about being a breeder and having animals is, is very challenging. When yeah. you're going to breed them, it's very labor intensive, very expensive. So that's what I would recommend. Spay your animals. Honestly, we really don't need to be breeding animals. No, we don't need. animals we have in every that's a single good point. shelter. Our shelter is completely filled to the brink. We don't know where it. to put all these animals because if we went... We have a no-kill policy. These animals are, are not euthanized. And we have some older dogs that they're not adopted. So it's become a nursing home. Yeah. We've had dogs there for years because they're not adoptable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so and we sucks. don't need more dogs. We have enough dogs. So we don't need. Yeah. It's so heartbreaking to see a dog in a shelter yes. for years. Like, for years. They don't understand anything. That's their entire life. So some people, you know, that, that tend to be older, you might want to think maybe get an elder dog, mm. an elderly dog. You don't want a new puppy knocking you over. Yeah, they're already potty trained. They're already potty trained, they yeah. They know a lot of tricks already. They're great options. An elderly dog, yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to take one more quick break, and we'll be right back. All right, and we're back with Dr. Carlos. And I just wanted to mention, or... Er, he did also earlier mention that we offer dental surgeries, and I just wanted to let everyone know that those are low cost compared to veterinary services. Pretty much all the services we offer are lower cost than you would find at a vet's office. So if you are interested in getting those pet dental surgeries, we do them weekly, and you can call us to get your appointment. And then I also wanted to let you guys know we have an online store for your pet's medication and food. You can have them delivered right to your door, and you can go to our website to purchase the medications and have them approved by our veterinarian. Or you can get medicated food if your pet happens to eat medicated food. And you can get it on our shop and it's at a discount price and it also helps out the shelter, which is awesome. Yeah, now that the holiday's coming, if you feel like contributing, donating, donate to the animal shelter. Help, you know, the, the animals in your community. And we also have that online pharmacy. Don't go to Chewy. Yeah. That money goes off to the fat cats in New York. <laughs> Help the, the local community. The money you spend locally stays in, in our community. So try to check us out. And, and, um, and uh, if you have some donations, it will really help out the animals in, in your community. Definitely. And November is actually Giving Tuesday month. So another great way you can help community members. And we've actually already started our Giving Tuesday campaign. We just started it a couple of weeks ago. So a great way you can help our shelter and all nonprofits um, contribute or all nonprofits are included in this Giving Tuesday campaign, but our shelter is doing it. Our shelter is going to be in this Giving Tuesday campaign with a bunch of other nonprofits. 
Giving Tuesday officially is ending on November 28th, 2023, but we are hoping to collect donations for our shelter because we rely on donations to be successful. We've had a few generous donors pledge to match all the donations as well. So you can donate now to have your donation doubled. Your donation helps us be able to provide emergency veterinary care for the animals in our shelter. Also begin new programs to help keep pets in their homes and not in the shelters, like the furry food bank program or our low cost vaccine program. Also provide free spay and neuter surgeries for those in need to help the overpopulation crisis and to make much needed upgrades to our evolving facility, which has been serving Flagler County since 2004, which is almost 20 years now. If you'd like to donate to our Giving Tuesday campaign, you can donate at flaglerhumanesociety.harnessgiving.org slash campaigns slash 12161. Or you can also go to our main homepage, flaglerhumanesociety.org, and there's a quick link to that. You don't want to write that link down. <laughs> And then I also just wanted to let you all know that on Thursday, October 26th, next week, we are having our annual Halloween bash at the Flagler Airport restaurant. It was formerly known as Hijackers, but it is now called the Landing Strip Tavern. Our Halloween bash will be on Thursday, October 26th from 6 to 8 p.m. The address is 202 Airport Road, Palm Coast, Florida. Leashed pets are welcome. And make sure to wear your best costume and your furry friend too for our costume contest for both people and pets. There will be prizes as well. Admission is only $15 and includes a free drink, delicious appetizers, and all the profit goes towards supporting the Flagler Humane Society. You can get your ticket at flaglerhumanesociety.org slash events and make sure to invite your friends. Alrighty, I wanted to give a big thank you to Dr. Carlos for taking his time to join me this week. Thank you for inviting me. We appreciate Spay and neuter. Definitely. Please. <laughs> we appreciate all your insight. Thank you for listening to Speaking of Animals. I hope you all have a great rest of your Saturday. Bye, guys. We just have like two minutes left. I ran out of material. Good. No worries. <laughs> That's all I have. Okay. I can, I have some. <laughs> you take the lead. Mm-hmm.